this is Andrew at Cody Manufacturing, and today we're going to talk about low fill technology, how it incorporates with the canning line. We brought in one of our partners here, Cody Miller from Hoyt Technologies, to talk about his applications. First, I want to address how low fill is generally handled on a Cody counter pressure line. We have float balls underneath our fill heads that dictate the fill level to achieve consistent, accurate fill levels across the board. The majority of our customers are going to go with just a hand scale check layer. But if you want to bring it up to the next level, the best integration that we possibly believe in is the Hoift One low fill detector. So Cody, tell us a little bit more about why people want to get into low fill technology. Uh, the big difference is, is with scale weight, you're seeing a variance based off of container size and weight, um, tear weights for lids, things like that. Viscosity of product can also adjust with that as well. Um, whereas x-ray, you're not going to have that. We take all that into account with our actual inspection technology that we have in the software. Um, you're going to see that your, your consistency is going to go and, and be a lot tighter throughout your whole run instead of kind of varying based off of pressures and temperatures and foam compensation and all that as well. So, so this is an apparatus that is, comes after the filling machine and it detects the fill level by sending x-rays through the can, is Correct. that right? Correct, so think of going to the dentist or going to the x-ray uh, for, say, your arm got broke. Um, same idea, we're x-raying every single can and then calculating the amount of x-ray energy that goes through the can, through the liquid, um, and then what's received on the other side through the receiver end. Um, so we're looking at a certain amount. Uh, none of that x-ray radiation is actually absorbed within the can, so basically you're getting uh, a more radiation from an, uh, a banana than you are from an hour of constant direct uh, reflection from our radiation surveys. Uh, so that's kind of the, the gist of our radiation survey. So what kind of output information are you getting? Can you detect low fills, overfills, lid detection? What, what, are, what are they going to see on the back end? So our equipment, the way that we have our Hoyt One available right now is we can do overfills, we can do underfills, both with the same inspection bridge as long as we're within a 25 millimeter window. So you've got a little over an inch of room uh, for your fill level variances to do overfill and underfill. Uh, main reason to do the overfill, uh, we are noticing uh, a product loss um, and product gain by that. So you know, you're gonna go through and save, in one run you might save close to a thousand dollars of product giveaway, whereas other companies that are running on a larger rate might see anywhere from four to five thousand dollars on one single run just from product giveaway over overfills. Um, the other thing, like you mentioned, uh, missing lid, we can also do vacuum and pressure check off of that lid to make sure that the seam is good. However, we don't advise doing that right post after the filler. We like to do that post your warmer. Okay, so. awesome. So this can tell you where the liquid level is. What a lot of people are concerned about is the liquid level is too low, low fill can, then you can't actually sell it to the customer, they're gonna pick it up, a low perceived value of that package. But one of the bigger issues that we're seeing specifically with open atmosphere fillers is that they overfill the cans all of the time. And you're giving away that extra half an ounce or an ounce per product. When you multiply that out of all the cans you're packaging throughout the year, that's a dramatic loss in just the financial money out the board. What are you hearing from other customers of the challenges of over-serving? Uh, so the big thing is, is we've noticed we actually have several customers that were fined great deals of money for the simple fact that they were actually giving too much product away, uh, which turned into tax uh, complications based off of the overfilling of product. So, you know, to avoid all that, we have the ability to, to check for that overfill as well. Great. So that is an option. Um, Cody manufactures everything end-to-end -end for a complete canning system, from depalletizers to twist rents to your filler, accumulation tables, label applicators, pasteurizers, everything we want, where do we put a low fill applicator in this entire line? So as for low fill, uh, the, the big thing for us is we typically like to go just past the filler, uh, especially if we're just doing gross low fills. So we're looking at stopping those cans that are two thirds, you know, somewhere in that, that range. Um, at, at this point, we can also do fine fill levels. So we're looking at that, you know, 25 millimeter gap for overfill underfill, whereas our x-ray can actually look at 1.5 millimeter gray area. So we're giving you that tight of a spec uh, based off of your fill levels. Um, another position that our device can be put is post warmer, post uh, pasteurizer, 
uh, for the simple fact that at that point we can look for pressure and, and we can actually check for a vacuum or a bad seal on your seam. Uh, you know, that's beneficial. You come to the, the case packer and all of a sudden you've got a leaker in your case. Well, we could have stopped that, you know, three, four hundred feet before that process even started. So that's an option as well. And we probably want to put this, like you said, right after the filler, before you apply a label, before you apply a shrink sleeve. Correct. Just so you make sure you reject those cans before any additional costs are added to them. Correct. So when your system registers that a can is too high or too low, what happens at that point? So at that point, we have several options. We have the ability to stop the line in, in, in whole. Uh, we have another option where we can actually reject the container with a single style punch uh, ram style rejector, knock it off into a bin. Um, we have multiple different style rejectors based off of what you're trying to do. If you're trying to sample things, we have the ability to reject upright onto a conveyor or onto a table. It just all depends on the application at that point. And this is a pretty much like a walk away machine, right? You set it. It starts rolling. Do you need an operator there monitoring it so at all? There's no need to have an operator there. Obviously, you're going to hear the rejector operate as it goes off. It's not loud, maybe in the 40 to 60 decibel range at most. Um, obviously, if you have more rejections, it's going to be a little bit louder, but it's yeah. not going to be something that's so quiet that you can't hear it or that you don't know what's going on. How, how much space does this equipment take up? So overall, we're looking between the device the, the actual inspection bridge that goes over the conveyor and the rejector, you're looking at about three feet. Our HMI is nice and small and it's remote mount, so you can mount it to the ground, you can mount it here on your conveyor, you can mount it on the supports, you can mount it wherever you've got room for it up to 30 feet away. So anywhere on your line, three foot straight section, that's all Cody has to build on the conveyor, you drop all your equipment on top and it's good to go? Correct, the utilities you're looking for are 110, and then we're looking for five bar air, so you're looking 70 to 80 PSI. And those are the only utilities you need in that area. Cool. So you can work with uh, Cody and myself to get a quote on any of these pieces of equipment. What we're talking about right now is the, the cans themselves having low and high fill, but I understand Hoyt makes a lot of other equipment that helps with cases and other applications. Correct. Tell us a little bit about that. So we've got several pieces that uh, are very viable for this This. Uh, product line. We have our empty can inspector like we were talking about earlier um, in regards to looking for ovality of containers, looking for foreign object inside. Um, we've just revamped that to a, a new low cost. It's about a third of the cost of our, our previous unit. Um, so we've got that availability. We've got our fill level like we were talking about here. Um, you move down the line, we have the ability to do missing lid and seam check like we talked about post pasteurizer. Um, then you get down to your case inspector where we have the ability to check for full case inspection. So we're looking for full can and full bottle integrity in the cans or in the cases. We have the ability to do label inspection, um, presence, uh, skew left and right. Um, if something like that ever came up, we have the ability to do that as well. So we can detect a can coming out, fill level, high or low, if a lid is in place, if a label is in place, and then once we multi-pack this, a four pack, six pack, 12 pack, 24 pack, 99 pack, you can put all the detectors in to ensure that all of the cans are in the right place in the full container and see it exit out the back end. Correct, awesome. all the way from start to finish. Great, um, where does Hoyt build all this equipment? So all of our equipment is built in Germany. Uh, it's flown over, lead times right now are in the six week span. Those fluctuate based off of every device because they are built to spec for each project. So you could work with uh, Cody sales representative to help you with this product, but how does install work? So install is a uh, pretty simple setup. Uh, we will provide you with the user's manual that shows you exactly how to set everything up on site. Uh, main thing that we ask for, we have what are called our preconditions where, hey, we have the device on site, we have it positioned somewhat where you want it. Uh, we have an idea of, hey, this is where the HMI is going to go. Uh, we have our utility drops already set up on site. Um, when our service tech gets there, he lands wires, connects power, boots on, and commissions the container. Uh, before the service tech leaves, they will show whoever the operator is, whoever the, 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 the brewmaster, whoever is actually going to be running the piece of equipment, they typically show some OJT on job training. Mm -hmm. So they'll show them how to, hey, this is how I commission a can. This is how, hey, say you're running 12 and 16s, but you want to run a 19.2 in the future. Here's how to commission a new container. We leave you with all the documentation for that. 
Um, we do our x-ray survey that we have to do on site. Uh, once it's in place, that's the end of it until it gets moved again or if something happens where you you know need to readjust it on the line or something like that. Otherwise, it's plug and play and set and forget. Now, you said the equipment is built in Germany. You're an American headquarters of this company. Are there any corners of the globe that you cannot sell and service into? We have offices in 18 different countries. Um, we sell to every continent and every country that you can think of. Um, we have devices that we've worked with you, sold to all the corners of the world right now. So that's still something that we're working and just happy to keep expanding on it. No? So when customers come to me with questions about low fill, one of the most common things that I address with everybody is that most of the componentry is in the filler itself in order to ensure that you get the proper fill technology. Hoyt is definitely the best name in the game for this type of future-proof, design-proof uh, standard of quality of detecting perfect low fill and overfill. We're seeing a big growth in the market in checkway load cell low fill detectors. And essentially, there are a lot of them were designed for dry goods. When you put them in a wet environment like a canning and moisture gets into those load cells, they tend to gum up a lot and send a lot of false positives. So today, we don't trust that technology on the marketplace. We suggest either going with a hand scale, which is how, once again, the majority of people are going to do it, or if you have the investment, you have the footprint, and you want the best of the best, the Hoyt one is the only thing that we represent at this time. And I want to thank Cody for giving an opportunity to come here uh, to talk to us today. If you have any questions about any of these devices, uh, contact Cody Sales at sales at Cody MFG. Cody, how do people get in contact with you? Uh, so if you need to get a hold of me, you can get a hold of me at cody.miller at hoif.com. Otherwise, you can also check out our website. It's hoifusa.com. Important to note, Cody Company, C-O-D-I. Cody, this beautiful man, C-O-D-Y. Thanks, guys. We appreciate you taking the time today.